Many experts are predicting that India might see a colder winter this particular year. India could be heading for a colder than normal winter this year, as meteorologists now say that La Nina conditions are likely to return by the end of 2025. Now, few months back, many experts also predicted that India would be seeing more than greater monsoon this particular year. So this year, quantitatively, the seasonal rainfall over the country as a whole is likely to be 105% of long period average. Because in the regions of Punjab, Jammu and also the regions of Himachal Pradesh, we saw unprecedented flood-like situation, which was never seen before. And those areas were flooded, which have never been flooded in the history of our country. Which is why there's unprecedented monsoon, more than likely rainfall and high levels of rainfall alongside early eruption of winter in several northern parts of our country is something which we need to talk about. And meteorologists are naming a term known as La Nina for this particular impact, of, for this particular effect. They are using the term La Nina to show that how in this year, more harsher winters, more colder winters would be seen in India and other regions as well. Now, in order to understand this term La Nina, which is a very important geographical phenomena in the world, we have to understand one phenomena known as El Nino, plus one more phenomena known as, known as ENSO, E-N-S-O. Other than that, a lot of other geographical phenomena also we need to know in order to understand this particular geographical phenomena very properly, which is why today's session would be focusing on El Nino and La Nina. And we'll be trying to break down these concepts in as simple way as possible. Hello, my name is Preetpal Singh and you're watching Perspective. Now, in order to understand these phenomena, known as La Nina, El Nino, very properly, first of all, let's start from the very basics. Let's see the world map. In that world map, let's zoom into the region of Pacific Ocean. Now, Pacific Ocean, as you can see, is Northern Pacific Ocean and Southern Pacific Ocean. Now, in between Pacific Ocean, you can see what continents are highlighted. On one side, there is Western Pacific Ocean. On another side, there is Eastern Pacific Ocean. On the Western side, very clearly, you can see the continents of Asia and Australia. On the Eastern side, very clearly, you can see the continent of North America and South America. Now, if that viewpoint is very clear, now in between, let's say there is an imaginary line known as equator. We also call it as intertropical convergence zone sometimes. Not exactly on the equator, but somewhere alongside the equator. Now, please keep this image in mind while we understand what is El Nino and La Nina. Now, in simple words, this El Nino and La Nina are complex weather patterns resulting from variations in ocean temperature in the equatorial Pacific region. Now, what is this equatorial Pacific region? The Pacific region just around the equator, the zero degree line which we just saw. And El Nino or La Nina are nothing but the opposite phases of a huge cycle, a huge phenomena known as ENSO, that is El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is a larger cycle. Now, in order to understand El Nino and La Nina, first of all, let us understand ENSO. Now, ENSO means El Nino Southern Oscillation. Now, El Nino Southern Oscillation, it describes the fluctuation in temperature between the ocean and atmosphere in the East Central Equatorial Pacific, that is in the Eastern and Central Pacific region. The fluctuation of temperature can be described as ENSO, simple. And typically if we see this El Nino and La Nina, they usually last for 9 to 12 months. Now sometimes the duration can be much greater than that, but usually it lasts for 9 to 12 months. Also do remember that our focus would be La Nina more, but in order to understand La Nina, first of all, we have to understand El Nino. So let us focus on El Nino first and let's try to describe El Nino in as basic manner as possible. And this El Nino phenomena, it was first deciphered or first recognized by Peruvian fishermen. So along the coast of South America, you, you could see a region known as Peru. Now Peruvian fishermen, they first recognized this phenomena known as El Nino and which was off the coast of Peru and it was actually the appearance of unusual warm water. Now this is very important. When Peruvian fishermen, they observed that the water is getting warm, the oceanic water is getting warm unusually without any reason and at a certain point of time after a few, after frequency of interval the water is getting warm, they recognized that phenomena as El Nino and soon El Nino came to be described as an irregular and intense climate change rather than just warming up or just warming of the oceanic surface waters. So till now what we know about El Nino is that in El Nino, oceanic water gets unprecedentedly warm. That's all. And one more thing is that because El Nino is not a regular cycle and it's not in a regular cycle, it is usually not predictable and which is why they occur irregularly after every two to seven years interval. 
which is why we can't predict that when this El Nino is going to start and when this oceanic water would become suddenly warm. Now those who have studied geography even a little bit they would know that whenever the oceanic surface water becomes warm, low air pressure area is created above that which means the atmospheric pressure decreases and many experts and many climatologists they define this linked phenomena of El Nino with that of Southern Oscillation as well which I just described as what is Southern Oscillation. Now since we understand till now that what is El Nino that is unprecedented warming up of the surface ocean water and that too in the Eastern Pacific region. In the Eastern Pacific region means dude at the coast of South America or at the lower coast of the Northern America. Now at that region if the oceanic water is getting unprecedentedly warm what would be its impact? And what would it cause? That is the most important part. Now, because of this oceanic water becoming warm, definitely in the Southern American region, there would be intense high rainfalls. There would be a lot of devastating floods as well. And convection above the warmer surface, water would bring increased precipitation, that is for sure. And also during the El Nino season, the rainfall becomes very intense in the Southern American region and it drastically increases, which contributes to coastal flooding and erosion in that particular region as well especially in the Southern American region because that is located along the equator and that is located alongside the place where the water becomes unprecedentedly warmer. Now because of that, because of floods, because of erosion, a lot of diseases also takes place and diseases they thrive in the communities and which is why there are devastating natural hazards also which occurs. Now this El Nino flooding is also very much related to increased cholera, increased malaria and increased dengue related cases in Southern American region. Also these warming waters, they have devastating impact on the fisheries and marine ecosystem of the coast of Peru and Ecuador as well. Now this particular thing happens in the eastern coast, in the eastern pacific region. In the western pacific region, exactly opposite thing happens. If a flooding is taking place in the eastern pacific region, droughts would be taking place in the western pacific region. Which is why in the regions of Australia, Indonesia, India and southern Africa, we could see heavy droughts taking place. And which is why it is usually suggested that El Nino and India monsoons are inversely related. That whenever El Nino like conditions could be seen in the world, we can very clearly predict that in that particular year, Indian monsoons wouldn't be good or won't be great. And also if you have to see historically, the most prominent droughts in our country, the six of them since 1871 have been El Nino droughts. Even the recent ones that is in the year 2002 and 2009 have been El Nino droughts as well. And which is why it would be very right for us to suggest that El Nino directly impacts India's agrarian economy. And and India's agrarian economy gets devastated and which is why there could be a loss of GDP also which could be seen, there could be loss of employment also which could be seen and impact on individuals health in our country alongside high levels of inflation could also be witnessed in India specifically during the case of El Nino occurrence in the world. Now since we have understood what is El Nino, let us try to understand the opposite of El Nino that is La Nina because La Nina would have a definite opposite impact than El Nino. Now El Nino as we discussed was un unprecedented warming of the ocean surface water in the eastern pacific region. Now in the same eastern pacific region, if the water becomes unprecedentedly cold, that is what we call as La Nina. Now again, La Nina is a Spanish term which means the little girl. Now it is also sometimes known as anti-El Nino or a cold event as well. That is your La Nina. So simply speaking in one sentence, La Nina event is observed when the water temperature in the eastern pacific region gets comparatively colder than normal. Now as a consequence of which, a high pressure area is created above the equatorial pacific region. Above the eastern equatorial pacific region, a high pressure area is created when the warm oceanic, uh, when the ocean surface was warm, a low pressure area was created and now when the ocean surface becomes unprecedentedly cold, a high pressure area gets created. Now as you would know that if a high pressure area is created over here in the eastern pacific, definitely in the western pacific region, a low pressure area would be created. And who is there in the western pacific region? Asia and Australia. So at the coast of Asia and Australia, a low pressure area is created and all of us know that air moves from high pressure area to low pressure area. Right? And which is why, because of creation of this low pressure area, it leads to unprecedented higher levels of rainfall in the regions of Asia and Australia. Which means in El Nino, there was flooding in the opposite region, in the Southern American region. And now there would be flooding and now there would be more than usual monsoon in the Indian region, in the region of Asia and in the region of 
Australia, which is why La Nina events are usually associated with rainier than normal conditions over the southeastern Africa and the northern Brazil. And La Nina events are associated with catastrophic flood-like situation and huge floods, massive floods being taken place in Australia. Also then what happens in the eastern Pacific region? In the eastern Pacific region, drier than the normal-like situation is, is seen. In the Eastern Pacific region, drier than the normal like situation is usually seen. Which means this situation is observed usually in the western coast of tropical South America, the Gulf Coast of the United States and the Pampas region of the Southern South America. So simply summarizing, in the Southern America region that is Peru and Ecuador, drought is usually witnessed during La Nina. But the total opposite, that is in the Western Pacific region, there is there are flood-like situations which are seen. More rainfall, heavy rainfall, unprecedented higher levels of precipitation is seen in the Western Pacific region, that is the region of Asia and Australia. And alongside the higher precipitation, the winters are also strong, which is why increased temperature in the Western Pacific, in the Indian Ocean and off the Somalian coast are also seen because of La Nina. So a La Nina-like situation was seen in the year 2010 as well, which devastated Australia's economy. So devastating floods took place in Australia's economy and they were one of the worst floods ever stuck in the Queensland area of Australia, where more than 10,000 people were forced to be displaced and get evacuated and damage was done to the cost of $2 billion. Now we can very clearly see and very clearly anticipate that why this particular year there was more than usual rainfall, especially in the northern part of our country, especially in the regions of Jammu, Punjab and Himachal Pradesh, why there was more than usual rainfall and why winters have come early and why the winters would be much more chillier, much more colder this particular year. Because this year is the year of La Nina. And La Nina has arrived already in American region. Now, soon it will be reaching to Western Pacific region and soon to India as well. Now, most of the impact would be seen in the northern part of our country, in the central region and certain southern states as well, but usually not seen in the northeastern states of our country. And now, since we know that why India would witness a colder winter, let us brace ourselves for this particular season. I hope you gained some clarity in relation to these complex terms, geographical terms of La Nina and El Nino, and why La Nina and El Nino leads to certain weather-like conditions, especially in India and different regions of the world as well. I hope now you are able to reason and rational this particular weather phenomena properly. All the very best and have a very beautiful day. Thank you.